Good morning, Illini, and welcome back to another Healthy Illini podcast. As always, I'm your host, Matt Schrock, and I'm glad you're here. Today, I'm excited to be joined by a pair of our student athletes here at UIUC, and they're here to talk about health and wellness from their experience and some tips they've gained along the way. So I'm joined today by uh, two of the athletes, uh, one from our softball program and one from football. Uh, first, we have Delaney Rummel. She plays third base for softball, and her major is recreation, sport, and tourism, a focus on sport management. Uh, Delaney, thanks for being here. Thank you for having me. We're also joined by Blake Hayes. He's a punter for the football team, and uh, he got his undergrad in kinesiology and is now studying for his master's in public health. Blake, f- thanks for being here. Thanks for having me. All right. One of the one of the ideas we stress on Healthy Illini is that everyone is on their own personal health and wellness journey. And each one is unique, but there are some commonalities. And that could be said for the both of you as well, because you're both student athletes. So you have some commonalities in, in things you experience, but you're in different sports. And so you have different focuses, you have different uh, uh, programs, things like that. So let's just start off with uh, some of your background and some of your experiences. What are some of the things that you've learned about your own health and wellness since coming onto campus? I think what I've learned is just being able to understand yourself and how you are just different from the person next to you, the way your body works, the, um, what you need exactly to function on a daily basis. And I think just using the resources around you and meeting with those who have been there, have done that, is something that's really helped me along the way. Yeah, I think, like like Delaney said, um, like for me, coming from a different country, I was kind of like came here and I didn't know exactly like how to fit in at first. And, um, you know, you find like your close friends and you gravitate towards them um, and you try and pick, you know, for me being on a team, I try and pick the ones that are the leaders or the the ones that you look up towards. So um, you gravitate towards them and they kind of show you the ropes. Um, And then you use your resources around you. You use McKinley Health Center for um, if you need mental or physical um, problems like that or, you know, you use like the coaches around you or if um, you're a student, like just your professors around you. I think what I've learned here is that everyone's really willing to help um, and like use their time because, I mean, that's that's their job and they love doing it. So um, just them being able to help you goes a long way. Yeah. Along with that, um, like you mentioned, you know, coaches and trainers and, and facilities on campus, um, how important was it for you both to have guides, to have people to lean on as you were trying to figure out, you know, how to adjust to the college, not just college life and, and studies, but also uh, the intensity of your sports at going from a non-college to a college level? There's a big jump there. Yeah, I think, I mean, for me, it was kind of wild for me. Uh, I'd never played the sport before coming here. Um, I just, as a being a punter, like all we have to do is kick it. So back home in Australia I was just like punting at a park um, being trained by a coach but I'd never actually seen a game or played in a game and then uh, I came here in the summer of 2017 um, I guess expecting to start and so the first game that I played in was the first game that I saw first game that I had like yeah played in so it was a wild experience I didn't really understand like the um, intensity of college football and what goes into it I didn't expect to be playing in front of like 60,000 on my first day, um, let alone, like I barely knew what I was doing. So with that came like my coaches, uh, the players. I was lucky enough to have an, uh, a kicker here uh, who now kicks for the Browns, Chase McLaughlin, who helped me a lot. Um, just kind of adjust and uh, like understand how serious college football is, but then how to just peel it back and, You know, if you just stick to a a daily routine or you just find the small things in the day to help yourself get better, then the uh, big task of playing a game that you've never played might not seem that big once you just kind of tackle those small things. So the people that, yeah, my teammates and coaches especially, like really helped me um, take that really big situation that I thought was maybe oh, like, I don't know if I can do this. Like, it's such a big task. And then to kind of wind it back and just be like, okay, like, I've, I can do this. And um, I have the support of my coaches and players. So that was a big step for me. For me personally, um, it's been emphasized since, like, the minute I got on campus to use your resources, use the people that have been here, and just know how it goes. It can be, like, really overwhelming right when you get here. Um, it's a lot bigger of a campus than most are used to. 
And one thing that my teammates have really stressed is just making everything smaller than it is. Softball is just a game. It's so small. You've played it your entire life. School, you've done school your entire life. It might be a little harder, but that's why we have the resources. That's why we have the facilities, the people, everything around you just to help you put it into perspective and just really be thankful for everything that we have here and the opportunities that are present. And that's, you know, it, it is a big shift from high school because, you know, you're both athletes and, you know, you, you've exercised before and you've, you know, obviously eaten well before, but there's a different focus when you, <clears throat> when you get onto campus and there's a, a different uh, level of scrutiny in everything you do and what you eat and how you exercise and when you exercise. And then on top of that, you're students, you know, and you're taking classes and that's a huge, that's a huge uh, uh, part of it as well. Um, how was it was it difficult uh trying to get that time that time management was it was it difficult at first trying to figure out how to balance everything together it's it's definitely a transition i would say you have to learn like we said before just what works for you a specific plan that you can go off of um and just also like once we said like utili utilizing um the people here um i would say the weight training is different from when I was in high school, just being able to work with one specific trainer with your team is just another level of excitement. And it just pushes you to a different level that you never thought you could have reached before, just with your teammates all around you, um, the coaches looking at you, just new expectations, new heights, um, just a new level of play that um, must be reached at this time. Yeah, I think for me, like, especially with time management, this management overall, like when I first got here, just meeting with my academic advisor and he would lay out like my homework for the week. He would lay out my classes. And um, I mean, that might seem kind of very elementary, but it's th what you need, I guess, because you got such a big schedule in front of you. And um, it, I don't, it doesn't go just for <coughs> student athletes. It goes for like all students. I think they have very busy schedules. They have a lot of extracurricular. I think if you just ride out, like if you can schedule whether it needs to be like every hour of the day or every two hour block, like what you're doing, um, just so you have an idea of the day. And then from a like health and wellness point of view, um, we have a nutritionist on staff. So I meet with her and then they lay out like an eating plan based on what your um, goals are body wise. I mean, being a punter, like it doesn't really matter what I do. I could, as long as I kick the ball, I could be, you know, 300 pounds or 200. It doesn't really matter. But I have my own, like, personal goals. So um, I meet with my nutritionist and lay out a plan based on the week. Um, Off-season and in-season, it kind of changes. I like to kind of eat a little more in-season just because um, you're kind of burning those calories, like, almost mentally, if that makes sense. Just, like, the high-stress environment. I think the same goes with school, like – even though you're sitting in class all the time, you're just kind of constantly on go. So um, fueling yourself with the right food, especially to help you succeed academically and physically um, was a big part of the transition here. Uh, you said it, you know, it sounds elementary, but making that plan, I, I think one of the biggest, one of the most important things that you learn in high school and college, whatever, is time management. Because even now, I mean, you know, I'm 43 years old and my, my week starts with getting my calendar out. And okay, this is what I have to do today. This is what I have to do tomorrow. Do I have time to fit all these things in? Um, that time management carries over to everything. And it really is important for any kind of mental health um, as you go forward of, of having your plan of keeping track of, of your responsibilities and, and planning in that time when you don't have responsibilities, making sure you have those moments that you can just breathe and take a moment. And that's one of the things that I, I do want to talk to you guys about because you're both student athletes. Um, and so you have a different experience than a, a large portion of our student body. Um, cause not everybody's a student athlete. Um, but Everybody has health and wellness. Everybody has, you know, their routines and things like that. And you are student athletes, but you're not always in season. Um, you, you have your off season and things like that. So when you're not in the intensity of your com competitive season, when you're not playing games weekly, you know, a couple times a week, whatever it may be, um, are there little things that you do, little, little tips that you have to maintain your health and wellness, to maintain um, the level of physical activity that you like to have when you're not in that intense go, go, go all the time um, during the season? Is there any, anything, because there may be somebody that's listening that says, you know, I'm not a student athlete, but I want to maintain my, my health and wellness. And I'm carrying all these things. Um, they're looking for some tips. They're looking for some ideas. Is there anything that you can share from your own personal experience that helped you in those times? 
Uh, I think for me, um, when I'm out of season, I just kind of like to stay um, traditionally just fit and healthy, um, physically and mentally. I mean, from a from I guess a food perspective, I just kind of like to eat um, just like whole foods, um, just like stuff that's you know natural and um, try to stay away from processed foods. Keep it like very simple. I don't really follow like a specific diet of some sort. I guess the closest would be like a Mediterranean, but um, just really just like healthy foods as um, standard as it sounds. And then, um, I mean, even like just once a week, just having a cheat meal, I think those are kind of fun things to do. You, you don't want to like limit yourself. I don't think, um, cause then that can play a role like mentally, you just kind of get bogged down and you don't allow yourself opportunities to go like grab pizza with your friends or, you know, go to the theaters and pig out on some popcorn and some candy and that. So, um, there's that and then uh, like physically in the off season uh, I work specifically obviously with punting and more like plyometric work um, but also just trying to stay fit and healthy I mean being on the football team uh, there's a funny like dynamic with specialists and typically we're not the most athletic or you know the most like the strongest on the team but you do want to uh, f- I guess fit in with the group because that's a great way to get respect with your teammates you kind of don't want to be the um, the guy that doesn't go hard in the weight room or stuff like that so you don't necessarily have to be the um, you know the uh, look the strongest or be the most like aesthetically pleasing um, body but you know you can just uh, attack the weight room and have a healthy mindset like that and then also um, in the off season from like a mental side point um, I mean, for me, I like meditate every day. That's something that keeps me kind of grounded throughout my day. And then I carry that through um, in the off season, then just reading. Um, For me, like I like to read a lot of like sports performance books, uh, mental performance. So I do that. And then also just reading like just for fun, like fiction, nonfiction, just kind of my interests. So kind of takes me away from my sport a little bit. So I guess I'd encourage people to like find the avenue um, I mean, like, I play a lot of video games as well. It kind of takes me away from football. And you kind of, like, when you're in it, you kind of forget, like, everything else, which is really good, I think, if you can find, like, an avenue um, that's a healthy habit. Um, And I think that goes a long way, just kind of breaking up the, you know, stresses of everyday life and just kind of escaping for a little bit helps a lot. I like that you talked about a little bit about the dynamic of, as a specialist, you're a little bit different from the others on the team in yeah. some aspects. Um, there may be somebody listening who's like, man, I want to go to the gym, but they're intimidated right. to go because they see somebody who's been there, you know, all day, every day for, you know, whatever, yeah. however long. They, they're fit and they're they're looking good. And I'm like, I'm just starting. For somebody who's going in there a little bit intimidated or feels a little bit out of place, is there anything, like in your experience, you said, you know, the specialists are sometimes a little bit out of place. Yeah. Mentally, how do you process that? Um, how do you not get down on yourself and, and or is there anything that you can offer that said you know is an encouragement in that area yeah it is it is difficult and i definitely um empathize with like someone that does maybe lack a bit of motivation but i mean my first thought is like people like actually don't care like what you're doing if i see someone in the gym i'm not judging them i'm if anything it's the opposite i'm i'm glad that they're there kind of working on themselves because everyone goes to the gym with the same goal is to better themselves. No one's going there to like not better themselves. So um, I think everyone in that facility or everyone in whether it's like, I've been to the like local local crunch. I've been to the arc, like everyone in there wants to, um, to have goals physically and mentally. So they want to get better at those. And um, I mean, when you walk in, you're just like, you, Um, share a common goal with everyone else and I think it doesn't matter what how you look or like what you wear or there's sometimes like a standard with a public gym Um, I think it's just important to get in there and um, I mean even if you don't have a plan you can kind of just do the basics I mean push-ups like sit-ups squats it really doesn't matter I think as long as you're moving Um, and then as you go on you can do your own like research and what you want to develop and um yeah you can just take that into the weight room try different things um and especially like with football uh with our new strength coach uh like heavy lifting isn't a thing for us like we're never putting like i haven't put over like 
225 on my back or like on my upper body in a long time um which is like i guess a standard number for football but um like you don't need to lift heavy you don't need to put heaps of plates on the bar you don't it can it's really like for me i focus a lot on form and just the technique in general because that um really helps with adaptations i think and i've seen it with like what we do with our dexa scans and um all that like you don't have to lift heavy which i think is a stereotype that gets thrown around a lot i think there's a lot of respect for guys who just kind of go in and focus on the technique and like kind of get in get out don't have to like showboat a little bit if that makes sense yeah absolutely and again it comes back to you know if you need help find a guide find a trainer yeah, find somebody absolutely. who helps you with that if you don't know um, how to how to do that like you know you think you're listening you're like well i always put weight on but how do i do it without it you know get some help um, find somebody who, who can who can offer that assistance i think so i mean it's a if you're um confident enough you can also just go up to someone and or whether it's a someone who's working at the arc just ask him like how do i if you want to you know i mean classic just like get bigger arms or something or if you want to kind of maybe lose a little weight how do i do that and there's plenty of equipment there it's i mean it's great facility it's it's the same as ours basically the same as football so everyone's willing to help whether it's just a, a random student lifting or whether it's a helper at the arc i really think if you're confident enough to go up to them and just say hey like i want to do this how do i do this they'll they'll help you out with no judgment well, you know, and it's true that everybody starts somewhere. Nobody, nobody's born with that knowledge. Yeah. So everybody asked a question at some point, yeah. whether your first day or, you know, 10 years down the road, um, you all start there. Uh, Delaney, how about your experience? Um, you know, things in off season, what do you do? How do you keep that, that mental focus? Personally, I just got out of the off season. My um, spring season actually starts this week. We play in five days at LSU, which is very exciting. But off season is more strenuous a little bit on the physical side for us. Um, we focus more on power movements, um, clean squats, bench, all of the above are things that our athletic trainer feels fits our needs for what we need specifically for softball. Now that we're moving into season, it's a little more quick movements, quick transitions. Softball is a game of inches, so we need to move as efficient and effectively as possible when we are on the field. As for mental health in the off season, I tend to try to get up earlier than my alarm is set for, <laughs> for classes. I think it's really important just to start off your day on the right foot, whether that's eating a good breakfast, going outside if it's nice enough and not negative degrees, or even just stretching in your room, doing like the little things right can really go a long way. In the off season, um, along with that, we're not traveling in the off season, so it's a good time just to dig into your teammates, just to um, find what works for you, get a planner, like we said, really figure out what you're going to do by the time the spring comes in season because that's when it's really go time. Um, some other things that I like to do, I like to read. I just love going to the store sometimes and just starting off my week on the right foot, getting groceries that I need, getting other essentials that are just going to set me up for success. And, yeah. There's always – the uh, points to, and I don't know if you both have the experience. You can speak to if you if you, you do. Um, where I feel like in off season, there's that moment where you're doing stuff, you're working hard, but you're not necessarily seeing the payoff because you're not playing. You're working for something that's coming, but it's that you know you're you're off. Let's say you're off season six months, and you're four months into it. And you're like, man, why am I grinding through this? You know, we got on two months. Is there ever that moment where you hit that wall or that plateau? And if there is, how do you mentally push through that? I mean, I think, yeah, I think every athlete kind of comes to that moment in their, or not moments, but like often moments in their career when they're like, oh man, like it's getting tiring. Like, do I really want to wake up this early and go work out? Like, or, you know, you might be having a rough patch where you're not playing as well as you want. And you're like, oh man, like I, I don't think I can do this. Like I'm not, I'm not good enough. And um, those moments are challenging um, and there's different ways to go about it uh, for me. Um, I actually have like a mental coach, uh, his name's Ben Newman and he talks about like, uh, the burn and why, what's that like fire that's, uh, lit inside you. And, uh, you know, for me, it, it's, uh, it goes back to like my older brother and things that he's done for me. And, uh, the, when I do hit those walls and when I do, you know, I might wake up and be like, oh, you know, I, I don't want to do this. Like, I don't want to work hard today. Like I, I think back to that burn or that uh the why um 
and that really helps me kind of realign my focus, uh, like reframe my perspective and kind of get back after it. Um, but those times do come and, uh, like there was, I mean, there was a time in full camp where I was struggling, uh, with my performance. So I went and talked to the, uh, sports psychologist that we have and he helped me out. And I think like we've been saying, it's like not being afraid to seek help. I think, um, from what I see, it's becoming a lot more, um, encouraged, um, which is great. Um, and I, it doesn't have to be in a traditional like clinical sense with a psychologist. It can just be a friend or um, listening to a podcast like this where someone's just giving out some advice. Um, but yeah, those times definitely do come. And I think just kind of going back to what anchors you um, really helps. I think almost every athlete has gone through a mental block at some point in their life, whether that is in the off season or even in season Um it's a marathon the whole season. It's very long. It's very time consuming. It can be physically and mentally draining if you allow it to be. Um, something that I try to do is just like dig into my teammates, dig into the person next to me. They have to get up at the same time as I do. They have to go do the same things that I do on a daily basis. And just remembering that it's really an opportunity and it's a choice and not to take it for granted um, because we are here for a reason and it's just like a blessing in the end and you're going to look back and just be thankful that you ended up doing it all and you got up at 5 a.m. and you were there for 12 hours and just all the memories and all. As for me personally, my spring of 2020 beginning of my season was where my mental block actually took place. I really struggled in the beginning of my season just physically was not performing to my best and was wondering if all the work that I did in the off season just went to garbage basically because I wasn't performing to my best potential when it truly mattered on paper and what helped me get through that was just meeting with my coaches outside of our scheduled times meeting with others talking to my teammates who have been through the same thing that I have and just how they got over it what they did specifically what if I had any mechanics that I really needed to fix to help my performance and I ended up having a full 360 on my season um, from start to finish. And honestly, looking back, it was a blessing in disguise because now I know what I can do if I ever go back into that physical block, mental block again, and just digging myself out of it or helping others who may be younger or older than me um, that are going through what I went through last spring. That's one of the, the best things about seeking help and talking to somebody else is that, that, like I said, everyone's on their own personal journey. No journey is exactly the same as anybody else's, but there's that commonality. Um, there's that moments where you can talk to somebody like, yeah, I've been there or I've dealt with this. And it makes a big difference. And uh, it makes a big difference in another area. And this is kind of the last area I wanted to talk about uh, with you guys is injuries. Um, you know, uh, we, we've all been there where you're cruising along, you're doing something and you're feeling good about your working out, your whatever, and then you get an injury, whether it's small or large, and it throws off everything, you kind of, you kind of shift. Um, and, you know, people say it, most athletes deal with injuries throughout the season that you never know about. There's always nagging injuries, there's, you know, you tweak this, you're sore here, uh, whatever, or it could be something even bigger. And, and Laney, you had this experience with, with a, a major injury. Um, and it was substantial. So uh, from your own experiences in dealing with any kind of injury, um, how, how did you work through it? What's the, what's the, mental, the mental and the physical? Um, what's the perspective that, that you had to learn or you had to deal with uh, when, when processing through that time? So for reference, I tore both of my ACLs before I was even 15 years old. <laughs> my first one, I was in seventh grade. And then my second one, I was a freshman in high school. Um, for me personally, these injuries allowed me to see the bigger picture of sports and what it truly means. Also, my first ACL when I was in seventh grade, I tore it playing basketball, which I thought I was going to be like a basketball star when I was in middle school. And after I tore it, I ended up just mainly focusing on softball, which was part of the reason why I'm here today. So just remembering, I feel like that everything happens for a reason. The fact that I was so young almost allowed me to be able to keep a spark inside of me within sports a little bit easier than I feel like it is for people who have injuries in college. I honestly was thankful to have tore them earlier rather than later, in my opinion, because right now is just a great time to be able to be out on the field and be with my teammates and all of that. Um, along with that, just 
Now, when I think back to my why, it's for the little girl who tore both her ACLs. That's really what keeps me going. I rehabbed for about a year for both of my ACLs just to get, because I knew that I wanted to play Division I softball, and I knew that was my goal. Just a fun fact along with that, after I tore my second ACL, which was um, the fall of my freshman year of high school, I rehabbed for about nine months to a year, and then the following fall was when I received my scholarship offer to play softball here. So that just coming full circle, too, and just remembering the why, like I said before, and just pushing through it, digging into the people around you. My parents and my two brothers were just a huge support system for me throughout that time. I couldn't even drive. I couldn't do anything. So they just really looked out for me, um, kept my best interest in mind. And I'm just so thankful for these two injuries looking back because it just brought me a perspective that I never would have had if I never did them and is truly one of the main reasons that I keep playing to this day, just to give back and to remember how much I went through and how much I've overcome and that you can do the same thing if you just um, use the people around you, use the resources, dig into yourself, know what's best for you. And you'll just push through. Yeah, I think <clears throat> um, for me, obviously <clears throat> being a punter, um, obviously I haven't had like any injuries really. Um, I never get hit or like, yeah, I just kick, so um, really, and I have a lot of time to uh, take care of my body. Um, you know, we don't we don't meet all the time and we're not out of practice. Well, we are out of practice, but it's just different. We're not running around, we're not hitting people. So, um, you know, we just, it's less impact. Uh, we can take care of our bodies more than other players. So, um, but I think a, f a part of me not having, not being injured or not having like any, major injuries that have taken me out of a practice or anything has been the recovery techniques. I mean, obviously we're very fortunate with athletic facilities to have like all every recovery technique you can think of, but I mean, just the classic ones that um, I do when, I, when I'm not there, like you can just fill up a tub with ice and jump in it, um, stretching, foam rolling, all the soft tissue work that you can do. Um, but obviously, like with football, I see a bunch of guys getting injured. Um, our head athletic trainer stresses that uh, it's about your mental state. And if you have a positive mental state, that can really help you. Um, we did have uh, a past player, Bobby Roundtree, who was a phenomenal player for us. Um, had, you know, he was a sophomore. He was dominating. He had uh, NFL hopes. And then he had a spinal cord injury. Um which, you know, he was uh, in a wheelchair and, you know, told he wouldn't have function um, in, his, in his upper body and lower body, ended up getting function in his upper body because just of the person he is, he was such a fighter. Um, and I think, you know, like Delaney was saying, he, he used his injury in such a positive way. Um, it was a long road. It was going to be a long road for him to return to football, but he always had that mindset that he was going to. And um, for us, seeing his development, um, he unfortunately passed away recently, but just him, that story that he left and the legacy of him um, going through such a major injury um, and kind of life being um, thrown in a 180, um, he was able to reframe it um, started doing a lot of ins inspirational stuff that um, obviously inspired us football players, but a lot of others that knew kind of just Illinois sports in general. Um, and I think it was just a great message that you can be injured or you can have kind of um, those moments in life where everything pivots, but uh, if you attack it with a positive mindset, it's kind of contagious and everyone around you will get better and um, yourself as well. So. It's just a story that's great, and uh, yeah, I mean, Delaney's the exact same, just kind of, you are thankful for those moments. I think once you flip a negative and try and find the positive in it, um, that can really help, and you know, it goes a long way just to help yourself and the others around you. Yeah, and you, you both have kind of consistently mentioned um, other people, you know, your, your support, your, your, your uh, trainers, your coaches, your teammates, things like that. And I, I really appreciate that because college athletes are superheroes. 
uh, to those of us who never played college sports, you're all superheroes. Um, you're, you know, you're in great shape. You're doing amazing things on, on the field, uh, things like that. But the truth of it is you're regular people who are doing things on the field, but you still need that support just like everybody else, you know, um, cause we often th- think of, uh, you know, well, superheroes don't need anybody, um, that you've got it all internally and you got that fire or whatever, which is true. But you do have that support system, and that's really, especially when you come to injuries and things like that, that support system makes a huge difference. And so uh, everybody needs that. Um, no matter where you're at on your journey, you need that that support system. And that's why we always continually say, you know, reach out to us here at Healthy Illini, reach out to McKinley Health Center, the Counseling Center, whoever on campus, the ARC, uh, Campus Rec. Um, get that support because that's what we're here for. That's what we're here to do. Uh, I also appreciate, Blake, that you said, you know, part of – your routine because you don't get hit as much is still to maintain um the, the your body to prevent injury you know like the the the, the foam roll or things like that and I mean, you you say that you don't get hit but i promise you if i went out and tried to do what you do right now injuries would occur <laughs> um so you know it makes a difference that you yeah. have that training Me too. Right. to uh to uh prepare your body for whatever you're doing right uh whether it's out kicking uh kicking punts or you know fielding a softball or you know running in a, in a, a marathon or a 5k or going and lifting to the gym that that preparation to pre- to prevent injury is also important i think it's uh i think it's important as well from a mental side is like um i mean i really started meditating during covid that was kind of just uh um i think a lot of people tried a di- different stuff in covid and i found that it really works for me and i've really kept that habit up for like two years and uh you know, there's been days where I've needed it for sure, where I've, um, you know, if I didn't meditate, maybe it wouldn't have gone as well, or maybe my mental state might have been uh, lacking that day. But then there's other days where I don't need it and I'm, you know, happy-go-lucky all day. Um, but I still meditate because same with the injury prevention, you just kind of want to um, prevent those negative state of minds when best you can Um you know, ride those positive waves um, as long as you can. And I think knowing, for me especially, knowing um, as an athlete that bad games will come and uh, bad practices, also like bad days in general, they'll come. And knowing that I think is um, a key thing, but uh, being able to combat them or eliminate them as best you can. I think me being able to like tackle um, my mental health uh, from kind of since my junior year um, I've really been able to see less bad days and enjoy more good days Um, and I think you know as I keep going I think I'll just you know have less bad days throughout the year and uh, knowing that they'll come but knowing that there's plenty more ahead plenty plenty more good days ahead um, I think that goes a long way in just preventing um, you know like a negative state of mind and staying in a positive one. I think, too, going off good day, bad day, as for being an athlete, if, let's say, you have a bad day, team has a great day, that's a win in the book. That's a great day for you, too, because even though you weren't at your A game, your teammates were, and they were able to pick you up and still secure a win for your team. And that kind of mindset, I feel like, really has played a role in my sports life and just being able to dig into those people around me and knowing that even if I'm not at my best today, they will be, or they have me, and then vice versa. If they're not at their best, but I am, I have their back. And just like building that trust and that camaraderie and that type of family atmosphere really goes a long way, physically and mentally, just being able to grind through season and grind through practices. Because like Blake said, you're not going to have a great day every day, even though you want to. And that's just life in general but being able to really just build those relationships and know and be okay with the fact that if you are not performing at your best but the team is okay then everything is okay in general you guys have talked a lot about uh reaching out and getting support um and uh you've been fantastic today in sharing your stories um if somebody heard something they wanted to follow up with your story or just wanted to you know pick your brain or get your advice is there any way to to reach out to you or any other athletes or dia or anything like that would you have any suggestions on that yeah, I mean, you can, uh, anyone that's listening can feel free to reach out to uh, myself on social media. Um, I don't know my specific tags, but I, my name's Blake Hayes. So uh, just kind of look for Illinois pictures, um, probably some football ones on there, whether it's Instagram or Twitter um, or 
my email might be on the roster for the football. Um, it really doesn't matter um, if you got any basic questions or whether it's kind of more advanced stuff. Uh, yeah, feel free to reach out. I've been in that situation before, just asking very generic questions, but I think they go a long way. And uh, having different support systems and mentors can really help. So uh, feel free to reach out if you want. I think it's important to remember that everyone starts somewhere. And if you ever need a hand, um, do not be afraid to reach out. I'm on Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, my email too. You can find me on the Illini softball page. My name is Delaney Rummel, and I look forward to hearing from you guys. Well, guys, unfortunately, we're out of time. Um, uh, it's, been, it's been absolutely fantastic talking to you. I really appreciate everything you've shared today. Uh, your perspectives are really uh, just powerful. Um, but uh, Blake Delaney, thank you so much for being here with us today. Thank you. Staying healthy and well is a daily year-round journey. It's day in, day out. There are ups and downs, and it, uh, whether it be due to injury or uh, just because you're having a good day versus a bad day, um, but that intentionality, that, that coming back and, and really focusing on your goals and, and keeping a consistent routine is really important. And, and like you heard today, it's important to have a support system. And uh, hopefully you have one. Hope you have a strong support system, whether it be family or friends or advisors or whatever, um, that helps you uh, get get where you want to go. But if you don't, reach out to us. Um, contact us here at Healthy Illini. Contact McKinley, the Counseling Center. Uh, there's a, a ton of resources on campus. You can find more in some of our old podcasts. We'll have some in the description here today. But uh, reach out. Uh, we're here to help. We want to we wanna walk with you. Thank you for joining us today. You're on a personal journey, no matter where you are in it. You are important and you matter. Your health and wellness are important and matter, and we are here to keep you well to excel. So go have a great week, Illini. Let us know how you're doing, and we'll catch you next time on Healthy Illini.